The Supreme, profound, and sublime Dharma is difficult to meet even in a billion eons, but now I have been fortunate enough to have seen it, heard it, receive it, and keep it. I vow to attain the true meaning of the Tathagata. In order to benefit all sentient beings, let's generate uh, the Supreme Bodhicitta. Today, our class is on transforming suffering and happiness into enlightenment. Uh, I can't quite remember if I've received the oral transmission in the Tibetan language, but uh, maybe I will inquire it and give it to you guys after. Um, today, I'm just going to give you the teaching. This text has three aspects, and the beginning virtue of uh, uh, initial in statement, and the middle virtue of actual text, and virtue of concluding statement. The beginning virtue also has three aspects. The first is the text, the title of the text, and then the homage, and the third point is the statement of intent. So let's talk about the title first. The title, Transforming Suffering and Happiness into Enlightenment, in fact, is the core of this profound text. What does it mean? I think all of you know, in our world, in uh, the practice, happiness and suffering in fact accompanies everyone throughout the whole life there is no one who had never experienced suffering nor anyone who had never experienced any little bit of happiness none of anyone would experience the extremes of either so we can say that in fact in our life it is the intertwined uh, happiness and suffering that occurs in our life Alternate, uh, alternately. Sometimes we have more happiness and sometimes we have more suffering. And as mundane beings, majority of people would think that happy, uh, suffering is something that we're trying to avoid and happiness is something that we're trying to pursue. That is our sole goal uh, to pursue in this life. And because of such kind of mentality, the majority of people are so much going after the happiness and so very much afraid of encountering any kind of uh, suffering to pursue happiness and avoid suffering, in fact, is so embedded in us, is so habitually embedded in us that we can probably see that experience in our daily life as well. But as, exper as a practitioner, when suffering is uh, uh, when there are suffering in life, uh, as a practitioner, you won't feel so afraid because he can definitely turn or transform that onto the path of enlightenment and same as happiness. People would probably question, well, I understand why to transform suffering, but why do you need to transform happiness onto the path of enlightenment? Happiness is something that we all pursue, isn't it? It's something that is so joyful and we enjoy it. Why do we need to transform it and turn it? In fact, both suffering and happiness need to be transformed onto the path of enlightenment. Why is that? Because when no mundane beings encounter suffering, they would be extremely saddened and uh, um, depressed and cannot accept it and uh, feel extremely, um, extremely upset. And there's lots of anxiety and lots of frustration, lots of uh, uh, fragility. Many of those negative emotions would occur, and in such a way, in fact, that person's life. Uh, can be completely destructive. However, after 
encountering happiness, isn't that good? Why can't a person accept happiness? In fact, for my dimbies, happiness is very difficult to enjoy as well. Because when someone has happiness, it's very easy for that person to also uh, generate the air, uh, the mind of arrogance and generate some condescence uh, towards others. For people with lots of merit, maybe during happiness, um, that person can enjoy it more. But there are people who can't really enjoy much of the happiness because of a lack of virtue. Just as in the Chinese idiom, it says that great virtue would promote great prosperity. So if someone who has great virtue and uh, integrity, that would promote prosperity or wealth and fame. But without the great virtue, without a great integrity, um, even if the person gets lots of money, that person cannot be happy either. Many people would say that I don't have money, but if I do, I would definitely be happy. I'll be very successful. That's well not necessarily true, because without virtue, even if you have lots of money, that could only become the cause for suffering, and then um, multiply into more suffering and eventually destruct your life. So, from the glance, from a glance, we can see that people would love to enjoy happiness. And and people cannot enjoy suffering, cannot accept suffering at all. But after analysis, we will be able to figure out that not only we need to transform suffering, we need to transform happiness onto the path of enlightenment as well. Because without such kind of transformation um, to the path of enlightenment, then the happiness and the suffering can be a cause of destruction to your life, it can be an unfavorable condition for your life. So through practice, we need to transform it, all of those uh, into favorable conditions. There are lots of practitioners who would enjoy happiness and not going to have arrogance or a condescension, a sense of condescension when looking at other people who are suffering. And they would rather share such kind of happiness with other sentient beings. And then this kind of happiness would become a favorable, favorable condition to uh, onto the path of uh, enlightenment. At the meantime, enjoying such happiness won't be a cause of uh, 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 of losing one's uh, virtue. Normally, I think people have uh, the strength to work with suffering and, uh, uh, and obstacles, but it's difficult for them to work with happiness or to live with happiness. In special times, in very difficult uh, adversity, they would practice diligently, but when they have more fame and more wealth, their practice would actually retrogress. We can see that from uh, fellow practitioners around us, in fact. Uh, some of them, maybe at the beginning of their practice, don't really have lots of uh, wealth or belongings. Um, but then, uh, and then they would practice very diligently. But later, uh, they get more famous and well known and uh, receive more s financial supports from others. And maybe because of the lack of merit and many other reasons, um, then they would lose their uh, practice as well as virtue. We can see such kind of examples in our lives very often. So that is why we need to transform happiness or favorable conditions on to the path of enlightenment as well. And it is also necessary to transform suffering onto the path of practice, because within samsara, in fact, we have more suffering than happiness in our life, with or without noticing it. There's so many different kinds of sufferings around us, entangling us. Uh, such as uh, 
the suffering, suffering, and suffering of change, and so on. If you do not transform this kind of sufferings onto the path of practice, then your practice cannot、uh, succeed. It cannot come to a successful fruition. There is no one that can go through a life, can go through practice without any obstacles, without any pain or suffering. There is no one、uh, like that. We can see from the previous masters'、uh, biographies, and we can read through their stories and、uh, see that, in fact, all the great masters endured so much more suffering and pain than the mundane people. In fact, if they don't have a way to transform suffering onto the path of practice, it would be very difficult for them to endure all of the suffering. How to transform it? Then you definitely need to practice it, because you cannot rely on、um, the soul theory. You cannot rely on your social status or your wealth.